Okay, this is Josh T. Franco um, speaking with Rita Gonzalez in her home in Los Angeles on August 21st, 2020 for the Smithsonian's Archives of American Arts Pandemic Project. Uh, Rita, thanks so much for taking some time to talk with me for the archives about this year. Mm -hmm. We just want to know, we want this to be a record of um, how American artists and art workers have been affected in 2020. So we'll just start with how have you been since March? Well, there's, yeah, there's been a tremendous amount of change. And at, um, at LACMA, at the LA County Museum of Art, we are already embarking earlier this year on a huge uh, institution altering, um, landscape altering, <laughs> staff altering, everything altering uh, experience with the, the demolition in, in, um, in, uh, in, in preparation for the construction mm -hmm. of what we're calling the Geffen Galleries designed by Peter Zumtor. So there was already, um, you know, January, February, a tremendous amount of um, movement, and, and this has been going on already for, you know, some time, moving um, of objects to various storage facilities, moving people out of the main uh, campus, across the street, new offices. So we already had this kind of whirlwind of change that we were going through. Mm -hmm. um, and then on top of that, <laughs> as we figured, started to figure out, uh, and you know, it, it's kind of crazy when you look back on that time of, of late February, early March, you know, because it just seems like, at the time it seemed like from, from one week to the next, mm -hmm. it was such a massive, sh there was such a massive shift. Yeah. I was about to go, on a trip to New York and participate on a panel for the Armory. I was about to go do some studio visits in, in, uh, in Miami and give a talk. Mm -hmm. And we heard early on in California, a lot of very, you know, sort of a strain of, of cautiousness from Gavin Newsom. And so immediately uh, I had to cancel my, my trip even though people, you know, colleagues across the country, or especially the colleagues in Florida that I was talking with were like, why, what's going on? Why, is, why are you, why are you canceling? Are you sure we need to cancel it? Yeah. So it's just within those two weeks. And I guess that would be when we went into, into uh, when the campus closed, when LACMA closed down, which was I think around March 14th, March 15th, this whole, set of changes um, all of a sudden, like within a week, and then about a month or so of just trying to figure out what does this mean to be working at home? What does it mean for the exhibition calendar? What does it mean for the calendar of exhibitions that we've got slated for the next two years, three years? And it took about a month just to figure out how is this going to impact the shows that we have up, the Luchita Hurtado show, the Julie Maratu show, the shows that we were about to install, the Yoshitomo Nara show that we were just at the beginning of installing, mm -hmm. um, and and Vera Luter show uh, that we were about to install too. What you know how this was going to impact the the installation? So it took a month of just trying to figure out, like shuffling the calendars basically, and figuring out what was going to happen. And not knowing how long we were going to be, you know, in lockdown. I remember talking to Andrew Perchuk of the Getty around that time, or kind of later, a little bit later in March. And when he said, oh, well, the Getty doesn't plan to reopen until September. I'm an, I remember like almost falling out of my chair and saying, you're joking. You know? yeah. <laughs> now here we are. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I had planned to do things in August and that's not yeah. happening. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious about, we wanted to document shows that were canceled, so thank you for listing those. I'm also yeah. curious about um, studio visits and you know this new, this yeah. new way of communicating is, is the, something that marks this year for sure. Have you engaged yeah. this for studio visits? Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, keeping in touch also with, with artists. 
Um, in fact, you know, I mentioned Ruben Ortiz Torres, mm -hmm. and we're planning to do a virtual visit with him because so many artists have been impacted who had who had shows up. So he had a gallery show up in in downtown LA, mm -hmm. and they basically just kind of froze that show because they couldn't plan any new shows. So the show is still up. It's just basically been up in that gallery in isolation. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have a, a group, uh, one of our, our acquisition councils visiting the show with him. And he's going to be talking about too, um, how he's been impacted. And in the, it's actually kind of crazy because I, um, we thought we were going to open up at the beginning of J July. Uh -huh. So I put together a recent acquisition show because suddenly we, we had a hole in the calendar in one of the spaces. And the show is called View From Here, which is uh, after uh, a series of work by Christina Fernandez, um, which is kind of poignant because it's a whole series of photographs that she's taken from the inside of spaces kind of looking out. Um, right. All of the spaces were... Uh, a kind of result of road trips that she made around California. Um, like uh, this photograph she took from the interior of um, uh, where um, Japanese Americans were interned in Manzanar. Mm. Uh, another that she took at Noah Purifoy's uh, museum out in Joshua Tree. Mm. But they're all just kind of looking from interior spaces into a desert scape or a landscape. Yeah. And, and, and anyway, that's kind of beside the point, but the point is that we put together this show of recent acquisitions and now we're, we're just kind of waiting to open, reopen the museum, but we're going to launch by doing some conversations with a number of the artists that are in the exhibition. And a lot of them, a lot of that is just asking them, like, how are you doing? What's going on with you right now? A lot of artists have had plans like residencies, um, exhibitions, uh, publications that are, have all been put on, on hold. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, maybe even are, are canceled, uh, like in the case of these residencies, or, or potentially rescheduled. So yes. it's, it's really, you know, made it for a really chaotic situation for so many uh, art historians and, and artists. Yeah, that uh, it sounds like Christina's work will resonate though with people in denser places like New York where you really can't, die. you really are just seeing yes. through your window. You can't go out of the exactly. street. Exactly, yeah. Um, which is another thing we're interested in too, how this is changing people's relationship to their living space and domestic space. We've been asking artists about whether they can access their studios or not. Uh, mm -hmm. But have you like just being home, you know, who are you home with? Are you doing things are you on the sourdough train or anything like that? No, I have a six year old, so it's all about. Oh, your school. Chaos. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, he's, I, I can't believe he has not interrupted right now. But <laughs> <laughs> the, All those kinds of things have been happening on these. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty chaotic. It's yeah. pretty chaotic. And then what about as being an Angelino and observing, so the, the other pandemic too that our, our secretary Lonnie Bunch has identified in 2020 is the surge in racism. Yes. And the yeah. things we're seeing in the streets. So what have you observed in LA or participated in? Well, I haven't observed, I, I haven't participated in any street protests just because I've been trying to be very cautious about mm -hmm. exposing my relatives. My, my parents live here. Oh. And um, also, my sister lives here in Los Angeles too, and I, we want to keep seeing each other, yeah. so we try to be very careful about exposure. Um, so I, I didn't go to any street protests, but you know, it's obviously um, watching online and you know following people who were tweeting and you know active on social media to see what was happening. And uh, I, you know, I think artists wanting to to participate as well by contributing in different ways. Um, what's been incredible too is artists making special prints. So the kind of activation of, of printmaking uh, posters. Patrick Martinez did this um, uh, multiple of the peachy folder, and he you know basically if you could send the receipts, you know, show your receipts, 
that you contributed to BLM or any number of, of organizations um, that he would send, you know, one of these multiples. So artists are being you know, incredibly generous. And a lot of it too is, you know, print um, and multiples that they're, they're using to, to uh, kind of not only to express themselves, but also to, to generate um, fundraising. And then of course here, um, we had been in conversation with, with Rafa, Esparza and Castles before uh, they ended up working a little bit more closely with, with MOCA, but you know, definitely were supportive of the pro big project that they did. And a lot of that came from the kind of activation, activism, fomentation that's going on with a lot of um, LA based, uh, especially artists of color. And, and you're referring to the sky writing project. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, besides LAC, you're all at LAC, we are also working on an international biennial right now. I think, is that right? Uh, no, not at the moment, no. Oh, you're, you already were on the... Oh, in Guangzhou? Guangzhou, yeah. Oh, yeah, that was, yeah, that was a couple years ago. Okay, so this yeah. is what this is done to no, I, I don't know. I, I don't know when weeks go by. There's no U.S. artists working. I mean, U.S. curators working in an international. I mean, I don't. I don't know how it would be possible. You know. That's yeah. Well, I've talked to some artists who are in by It's 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 a mess. But um. I know Jamila at um, ICA. She was working on the new museum triennial, and I don't know how that's impacted because she had done. I think she had done most of the traveling for the triennial mm -hmm. um, preparation, but you know, how that's impacting the, the project, I have no idea, but it would be really, I mean, it would be pretty much impossible. And a lot of the biennials of course have, you know, Berlin, Sao Paulo, they've all been forced to delay yeah. by a year. Oh, you know what, maybe what you're thinking is I was, um, I'm on the advisory committee for prospect that yeah, right. Naima mm. Keith and Diana Nawi, and it was supposed to happen this fall where, you know, probably I would have gotten, be getting my tickets for New Orleans right now, but um, that's going to happen next year. Do you see any of these new features like the Zoom studio visit or um, these kind of timed things uh, like lasting in the art world? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I think that, you know, the online programming. Yeah. Um, my colleague Christine Kim has been um, moderating and or co-organizing with Naima Keith, who's our head of education, an incredible series uh, that's called um, "Racism is a Public Health Issue." I think that's the the, the super title, and then each one has a different uh, focus. And we've had you know the the largest numbers of audience, quote, you know, audience, yeah. um, you know, over a thousand. Wow. viewers and then that's you know that's just in the original but when it's archived of course on youtube you have you know yeah. many more options and yeah i mean i think immediately we shifted gears shifted focus and right now actually the education department um i mean typically at this moment they would be working actively on a lot of exhibitions but um, lausd has turned to the the education department and at Lackman, I'm, I'm sure at other museums, looking for online resources that they can share with their students. So they went into overdrive producing um, resources that artists can use, teaching resources for visual arts teaching, but also visual arts instruction, but also for you know more art historical content, but for you know K through 12, um, you know variety of approaches. So they they've put so much effort into that. Yeah. Um, so, well, you know, this is a document for the record where Smithsonian we reasonably expect will be around, but this will be around in a hundred years, say, and mm -hmm. I've been asking people um, what in a hundred years the person who views this should know about the American art world in 2020. Um, I think it's just been turned upside down because everything that structured it in terms of the commercial side and then in terms of uh, institutional side, but also in terms of smaller art organizations, cultural organizations, artists run spaces, everything 
has been and foundations you know everything's been turned upside down so art foundations or foundations that fund the arts reevaluating their funding uh, priorities to museums um, reprioritizing or prioritizing collection shows collection based shows because the next few years are so insecure in terms of touring exhibitions, insecure because of loans, insecure because of budget, um, insecure because we can't travel. Yeah. So I, all of that, and then some of the facets that we've talked about, how it's impacted artists detrimentally, mm -hmm. and also new scholarship and new, uh, you know, just new ideas. You know, I, I, it's very hard to generate new ideas right now. Mm -hmm. uh, which is a hindrance, but on the other hand, it's been really interesting for me because I've been spending a lot of time rethinking the 1990s and what was happening in Los Angeles mm -hmm. and how it was a really generative moment in Latinx art. Um, there was a lot of crossover with with urban planners and architects and the you know Los Angeles studies um, kind of emergence. So, in some sense, you know there's not been the opportunity to travel around and, and, and look for inspiration outside yeah. uh, and start new lines of, of inquiry and research. On the other hand, it's been a good time to reevaluate <laughs> mm -hmm. and reconsider uh, our collection, reconsider what's here in LA. Um, yeah. yeah. That seems to be a trend of just going deeper. Yeah. Yeah, yes. and it, it'll be interesting to see the impact on local artists' relationships with the museums in their city or their town. Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But I hear you about the, yeah, impeding new ideas because our reading room is closed. <laughs> and we have a lot digitized oh. online, but you know, our reading room is closed. Oh, exactly, space. exactly. Or just yeah. go, you know, traveling like you travel. Yeah, exactly. Get to go see other exhibitions domestically. Uh, and internationally, going to biennials. <clears throat> I'm sure <clears throat> I would have gone to Prospect. Yeah. I had hoped to go to Sao Paulo. Yeah. You know, I just, I had hoped to do research this year, you know, traveling, and it's just, it's not going to happen, and it's not going to happen for the foreseeable future. Yeah. So I think we all know there's not going to be like a magic switch that this is over, even if there is a vaccine, but uh, if there were, what would be the first thing you would be look forward to doing? Getting on a plane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't call my family. Yeah. I'm, I am, you know, I spent so many years traveling in my, in my job. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, you know, I kind of thrive on it. I, I thrive on what I learn. Yeah. And, you know, I probably just buy a ticket as soon as I can go to Mexico City, <laughs> you know, <laughs> tomorrow, if I, if I could, you know. Yeah. But there's, you know, there's a lot of places that I would like to go. And so I feel a little starved in that sense. Of course, that sounds like such a, you know, uh, pampered life problem or something like that. But, it, you know, it, it also just feeds what, what we do and, and how we approach our work. Yeah. Um, so for the last question, I've been wondering if... Um, you know, there's a lot of reporting about everything going on, obviously, but is there anything that you have noticed that's missing that you would want to put on the record about things this year? Um, I don't know that there's not a lot that's uh, not on the record because what's so incredible, for example, with this, you know, moment of reckoning, as they call it, is that let's say within museum structures with um, demands from different, uh, different uh, uh, departments, different, uh, you know, just realms within the museum structure mm -hmm. for parity, for transparency, for decolonization. Um, all of those things have been pretty out there. Mm. Um, on social media, you know, the change, what is it called? Change Museum? Change the Museum, yeah. Change the Museum, for example, the Open Letters, mm -hmm. um, the uh, groups that have kind of formed, uh, I know there's 
Helen Molesworth has this like white women's group, you know, that there's sort of like a lot of these groups, but also I know we too have been on a lot of discussions with our Latinx co colleagues. Um, there's African American curators so uh, group as well. So I feel like there's been a lot of sharing, a lot of resource sharing, a lot of platforms to, uh, to, for dissent and for critique and that those things are also reaching the ears that need to hear them and the eyes that need to see them too. So that's great. The things that would have before COVID been behind closed doors or like just between me and you or just off the record, they're now so much more in the open, which is so incredible. Yeah, and, and you're not the first to observe that in this series. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very real. Yes. Um, well, thank you so much for doing this. Sure, sure, sure. It was fun. It was fun to see you. I like your, is that tie-dyed? It is. I'll tell or you. I'm going to stop recording and I'll tell you about it. Oh. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Official goodbye. Okay. Bye. <laughs>